collection. Um, I think we have a total of 25 paintings. These are all paintings uh, in, in the gallery. Uh, we actually have a little lobby gallery. I don't have any slide images of that, but in the space where my desk is, we were able to put some more work, uh, small works in there. But this is the main gallery. And there's, there are a variety of sizes. And there's a bench there, so you can come and sit and take a look. <laughs> so um, for, I have the um, slides in chronological order, pretty much, so they're very easy for me to pull up. Mm -hmm. And if you want me to pull one up, just let me know. Okay. But there's a, a couple of things I wanna point out about your work. So the, the work is, uh, they're, they're all paintings, but um, people have mistaken them as collage. We've talked a little bit about that before, um, but you you actually used to do collage. So can you mm -hmm. tell me what, um, how that transition happened from going right. from collage to um, to paintings? Sure. Um, so the um, I used to do collage, and everything uh, it was on a museum board, and it was all framed under glass. And at the time, um, which was frustrating because there was things that you were missing through the glass uh, of texture and a feeling about the work and some subtleties. And at the time I was um, represented by a gallery in Hudson that's no longer you know, there, um, but um, uh, Kiyoshi uh, who, ran, who owned and ran the gallery, he, uh, he said to me one day, um, uh, you've got to get this work out from under the glass. He just, you know, said it and it was at a good time. It's hard to make a big transition like that. Um, and, but it was a good time for me and I knew he was right. And I knew I was ready to do that. And so I uh, bought some, you know, uh, wood panel boards and because it felt like as close to the museum board that I was used to working on. And I just started uh, doing it and it was hard. It was, uh, yeah, it's always, it was, you know, it was just hard to do, but it was in the end worthwhile and it was kind of exciting. And at the same time, I realized that when I wasn't collaging, which I was dependent on type that I would find and the, um, and the color of the paper, I was um, dependent on lots of things. And so in, in going, in going on museum board and deciding to paint everything and not collage it and write all the type, hand write the type myself, um, it, it was a huge amount of freedom because I could, um, you know, the color, I could control everything. Mm -hmm. I was using pens and I was, uh, it's many layers of acrylic paint. Um, and it, it was, it was like, it was opening up this enormous window of opportunity for me. It was a lot of, it was hard, but it was kind of fun in its own way. Yeah, yeah. I know sometimes uh, change is, is really hard, but if you know it has to happen, mm -hmm. it also can be pretty liberating. Um, yeah, that's exactly you get, how... get your feet wet, you know. Right. Um, <laughs> which is, always, it's hard yeah. to get in the cold water sometimes. <laughs> but, in, in, um, the very, in the very beginning, when I started, I would do a certain amount of work and then I would have to kind of breathe and actually walk out of my studio and mm -hmm. breathe and go back in again. <laughs> that was, it was right. anyway. I do that all the time, I know. <laughs> so I pulled up this one because when we were installing the show, we were talking about this when you said that a woman, who was standing right in front of this painting with you, mm -hmm. could, mm -hmm. didn't believe that it was a painting. <laughs> she right. thought it was a collage. <laughs> is that so, this is one, right? Yes, yeah. uh, it was in a, in a show in Woodstock. Yeah. And um, I, it was an opening and I was talking to her and she said, where's your piece? Cause we were standing. And I said, well, actually right next to your piece. And she, yeah, she just kept <laughs> insisting that I was wrong. <laughs> I kept saying, I, uh, I did it. Uh, I, I did it. I'm <laughs> it was kind of, it was pretty amusing. Um, yeah. I tape a lot of edges. And so the actual color, the paper that's painted has numerous, um, numerous 
layers of acrylic paint to, and that's to get the kind of feel that I want to get. But because I tape it, and this was never intentional, this just happens, um, lots of paint um, collects on the edge of the tape. Oh. And, um, and it, so when you take the tape off, it actually has a slightly raised um, uh, edge. And that in particular makes it look like you could actually pick up the pa paper because there's a, the slightest bit of shadow and, and raised edge there. Mm -hmm. And the more I struggle getting the color, the higher the edge is. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, yeah, and then, yeah, and then the the type is all you know, it's all hand done. But I do tape the um, the top. I, I do do a lot of measuring and a lot of taping to make the like the margins very even and to um, and and space it out the way I want it. Otherwise, it, you know, to keep it all straight looking, which is important to me, yeah. to make it look very neat. Yeah. Um, so there's there's a there's actually the show is called Games of Chance and so the, we've got majority of the work is the series uh, with the playing cards, um, but we also have your you know you've got a lot of things that you work on simultaneously and we've got some of these um, other works in the, uh, the pinwheel series. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, we didn't actually say this earlier, but like you're, a lot of these um, objects and these letters. It's ephemera that you've collected. Is some of it's personal stuff in your family history? Is that correct? Uh, as some, I started out originally right. with personal things from my family and my husband's. Um, I, I think most everything that's in the show that is because it's very recent is all things that I have acquired over time from uh, uh, in, before pandemic from you know uh, antique stores or used bookstores or. Um, or eBay, and recently in the last couple of years, eBay and Etsy, mostly eBay. Um, they're mm -hmm. old letters from really all over the world. Mm -hmm. And um, they're, they have a, they're personal. And they're, they're, they're nobody, they're letters from, they're nobody well-known or famous or anything. They're just all of a very personal nature mm -hmm. and they are time, kind of timeless. They're, they're well, do you see them when, like, if you're going to look at them on eBay, do you, can you see the content or are you getting boxes and it's kind of a surprise inside? Um, mostly I could see very generally the content. Right. So I might be interested in the content and I might be interested also in just the vision, how it looks, how it's typed or how it's written. Um, so it's kind of a visceral reaction to what I'm, a reaction to what I'm seeing. Um, yep. Sometimes it's a combination, and um, and then some. Some of it is a bit of a surprise, or a disappointment, or a, or an excitement. So it just depends. It's always it's a fun. It's just fun to do, you know, yeah. um, uh, late at night. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we've talked so, about like how, I've heard you talk about the uh, with the NCPR did an interview. I heard some of mm -hmm. that. They haven't aired it yet. But um, in my conversations with you and also listening to some of that, um, you were talking about how you like kind of form an emotional attachment mm -hmm. to some of these people that you don't mm -hmm. know. I mean, they probably yeah. haven't been around for a while because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes. you're collecting some really old stuff. Can you talk mm -hmm. about what that's like to like, and you also, I think you said that you, your studio, like when you're working, it's very quiet. You don't have music playing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no radio it's nothing very, yeah. yeah i i work in silence i need to do that um i need to concentrate um especially when i'm doing lots of the writing um if my mind wanders even i, I make a mistake so i it i have to be very focused um and i like working in quiet anyway um yeah you start reading you know in the beginning you might choose the letter you're going to use because it fits in visually. And then you start when you're when you're transposing it and you're writing it. And I might not write the entire letter. I might have to pick and choose a little, depending on the space that I have allotted for that and, and other spacing issues. But um, you then you read it, you're reading it word for word, and you 
just get, or I do, I get really involved in these people to the point where sometimes I've tried to research them and, and find out like, like I did this piece and there was these letters um, from two brothers writing home to their mom from World War II. And um, I did a lot of, I actually wound up doing research on these two fellows to see if they survived the war and what happened to them. And, and I actually found them. Uh, some, sometimes you don't, but, it, but you, do get, you do get involved. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a, I was taking some notes and it's like, it's so interesting. Your work is so interesting. Like, so it's like your work is narrative, you know, um, but um, so there's these stories are in most of these, even, mm -hmm. even the one that is, there's no writing. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You have a story here in this one too. Right. Um, so, so it's like, I, I also think of you as an abs kind of as an abstract painter because mm -hmm. um, the way you play with the space, it's very flat. Mm -hmm. um, yes. and the 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 color is often really unusual like let me go to like this one from the games of chance series mm -hmm. um and th so there's that and then then some of these objects are painted so realistically so um were, so the two the people that you researched were they are they still mm -hmm. alive uh, they weren't alive, but their descendants were actually, yeah. and I did, yeah, it was, and they both survived the war, and it's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I just took a lot of notes, and now I can't read my handwriting. That happens to me. <laughs> the, um, the games of uh, chance series, like this is one of them. Right. And then, um, here's another one. So they're, they're a little bit different than the letters. Um, and yeah. So how did this series come about? Um, you know, I, 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 I don't know, actually. I, um, I think I came across a playing card and um, and I looked at it, and I just saw a lot of possibilities. And then I, I I bought this very old, worn out set, which a lot of these pictures are from. They were beat up, and um, you know I, I I you know I just don't know. I I was obsessed with the Queen of Hearts for months and months and months, and the Joker card, and it, it's something to do with. Um, how unpredictable our lives can be. The idea of chance, the idea of how random things happen sometimes, how we're caught off guard. Um, it's a little bit about all, about heartbreak if for lack of a better word. And there's, there's enough of that to go around these days. Um, so, I, you know, I, I don't know. They just spoke to me in a, um, yeah. um, they just spoke to me and I really wanted to use them. and. Um, yeah. Um, and and it seemed like there was infinite possibilities with them. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, like the letters. I mean, there. I mean, there's a lot of emotion in those letters, mm -hmm. you know. And and you know, in the time of pandemic and so many other things happening in the world um, mm -hmm. that are rather upsetting, um, there is a lot of heartbreak. And I guess it's is it a way to process some of that, maybe. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's like we all, you know, have our stories or we all have our plans. And then, you know, um, and then the sort of the Joker card comes along and goes, you know, aha, uh -huh. <laughs> you thought you had your plans. <laughs> this, is, this is what's what, this is what's happening now. So it it's just right. You know, a little bit of life, and yeah. um, and it was uh, in some ways. Um, I used to, I used to years ago always say that I've always thought of myself because basically these, basically all my paintings are still lifes, and they're just instead of painting oranges and apples and um, pictures, they're there's just still lifes of paper, and I used to always say that although you see, you know, no human form. In, in my paintings, um, it's all about the human condition. 
So, um, so I guess that carries forward. And, and in some ways, the cards, I'm actually painting an image of like, let's say the queen. So in, in some ways, there is an image now of a, of, you know, of a person. So, but I, I'm always, I am at heart a still life painter. That's really what I do. That's what I love. That's great. I mean, so the um, this <laughs> I wanted to put up this painting because <laughs> I had you had sent me some images maybe a month or so before the show, mm -hmm. preparing the slide talk, uh, the slideshow for the Zoom, and <laughs> we had this one, and you emailed me and said you can't use that one anymore. Take it off. It's totally different, and it it's totally different. Yeah. It used to have a very dark blue background and. So I guess, I think my question is some like your process, like how does that, um, you, maybe you could talk about this one or another one, like how, you know, maybe where, um, um, let me just see, I think I had a very specific question. Um, so just, if you could give a little bit of a history of how one or two of these, how they started, Right. And like how they ended up where they ended up, if it was very different. Right. Often so this, it is, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so, you know, each painting almost has its own journey th that you go through with each one. Um, for me, I mean, different artists work in obviously very different ways. And I don't do studies of these. Um, I, 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 I tone the boards and I, play with objects. Sometimes I have a very definite idea in mind. And with this one, originally I did, and it was um, only, it was many less cards and they were very vivid. And there was, as you said, a dark blue background. And um, I put it away for a while. I thought it was done. And when I took it out, I didn't like it at all. It was very static, I thought. And, and I added another layer and I added some cards on top and then I put it away again. And I, I kept taking it in and out and changing it. Um, and, and by the way, only because I photograph all my own work, um, there is a blue, a, a very, a quarter inch blue border around this painting, the actual painting. But when I was photographing it and I had worked on this painting up until almost the last minute that I drove the paintings up to the gallery um, because I was so unsatisfied with it. And, um, I, I, when I photographed it, I couldn't get it even. And so I just eliminated it in the photograph, but there is a, a small blue border, which is the only thing original from the original piece. Right. Actually, um, I can see a little bit. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but yeah, I can see I a little blue there and a little blue there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's a totally different painting. Um, you know, some paintings, you have an idea and you just go for it and it just works out. And um, that's always kind of like a bonanza when that happens. It does it usually. I, I do a lot of correction and a lot of changing and some sanding down and some, you know, I, 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 I work on things for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So this is a really interesting painting. This is a small painting. Mm -hmm. And this was, this is a really fun painting to read. I, I mean, fun. It's just, can you just say, just tell us a little bit about this yeah. one? So uh, years, years and years ago, um, I worked for this. I've had many, many jobs over the years. And, but years ago, I had this part-time job. And um, the woman, the, my boss was moving out of state. And she had this big garage sale. And um, I went to it. And uh, she was selling this old grandma book from her grandmother. And I, I bought it. And um, it just had the most beautiful, un, un, just indescribably beautiful and sometimes disconcerting <laughs> old diagram sentences. And, and th but this page in itself, I, I was so moved by it. Um, so I just thought I would just reproduce it. So it's reproduced basically the way it is. Um, and it just, the, the word, remember me, listen to me, love me. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, it, within a grammar lesson, and I have worked over the years a lot with collage, and I'm, I'm kind of 
actually working my way back a little, but not in collage, with uh, grammar books. For some reason, they're very appealing to me. You know, um, the, 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 there was a tone to some of them that um, was very uh, empathetic or moving or mm -hmm. whatever. So I, so the words, I, there are a lot of, certainly the single letter, small pictures, the words move me and that's, they're, they're all about the words, I think. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, some, there's some of them are just so intricate. Uh, yeah, so. I mean, that's, wow. <laughs> so this was a letter that a mother wrote to her son and was talking all about this family wedding that he couldn't attend. And it's uh, part newsy and uh, part um, sad that he wasn't there. And there's a, there's a, I find that there's, there's a, there's a lot of things um, sort of hidden in these letters mm -hmm. of things that people are not saying, but they kind of eke through and you get a, a feeling for it. And I think, um, that's um, very much how you know we all are. There are th all all the things that we don't say, mm -hmm. that or we can't say, or that you know, and so yeah, yeah. And I also I imagine that um, here's another from the game of chance. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is a little unrelated to what you were just saying, but mm -hmm. that. Um, because I have the column of all, the, I can see all of them. So just lots of th thoughts are coming to my head. Um, in, in collage, you, you can't really control the color like you can. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So, and that's been wonderful working with the color. Yeah. yeah. I wanna um, let everybody know on our website, we have a link to an interview that Fern did um, with W uh, MHT in uh, out of Albany, uh, the Aha a House for Arts. It's like a I guess like a five minute video, mm -hmm. but he go he's it's a studio visit. So um, he he's in the I can't remember the guy's name that does that, but he uh, Matt Matt he visits your studio and it's really great to see how you work and the pens and the tools and your drawing board and that what is that tape that you use for your uh, so I use uh, drafting tape and I, I use Nichiban tape, which is uh, uh, from Japan and um, getting a little hard to get in this country these days, but, um, um, uh, and they're all low tack tapes. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I use some for some things and some for others, but I use this very thin tape, Nichiban tape for um, making those lines above and below where I write to keep me straight, really. And I measure, there's a lot of measuring and I measure every line individually to make sure it, you know. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I mean, so, well, here's, this is one that we've got um, in cursive. These two are easy because the paper, this paper was lined and with the, with the handwriting, I don't, actually have to measure I just right. you can because it's not exact in itself so right but I copy I try to copy the actual handwriting always but then if we go to this one I mean you're kind of you're painting type yeah it's a right typewriter. it's a type letter yeah. yeah and that Ichiban tape helps you keep a straight line I guess right yeah, yeah. <laughs> right wow um here's another Oops, I'm still magnified here. Let me shrink this back down here. Sorry. So I'm, I think um, I'm just gonna show a couple more before we go to the chat room. Um, this one's rather large. I'm just gonna go clo a little close up. Pretty intense, uh, mm -hmm. as you can see. So, uh, sorry, let me just see if there's anything here I haven't, I mean, you really have to, you know, see them in person. 
they just they they have a certain glow too. What kind of paints do you use? Uh, they're just uh, they're acrylic paints. I use a, a combination of Winsor Newton and a Golden. Yeah. And um, uh, one other type. A, I'm not sure how to say it. Senular, sen something. They have some nice colors. Um, oh. Yeah. So it's it's and I sometimes use medium and I sometimes don't. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, use uh, sometimes this golden sort of bead gel and you brush off the beads and it gives it a little glow. I think some of it is is just because of all the layers, one layer on top of the other. Lots yeah. of layers. I mean, this one, I, th I see that, that line there when you're mm -hmm. working on the right. color. I mean, it really does feel three-dimensional. But, and also this one, I love this one. Um, this, I think you can see my mouse. Um, right. Got, the, the ink got a little smeared, I suppose, in real life. And you yeah, so, right. So I would, I would smear it. I used to use a, I, I use a razor blade a lot and I scrape down things that are too dark or I want to smear or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. And I think I'm, oh, this is another, this is a beautiful one. This is a combination of your games of chance with letters. Yes. Too. <laughs> so, so I think I'm gonna, oh, I just, I'm sorry, I, my screen, not cooperating. I may not see everybody. I see Lindsay. <laughs> yes, Hi, hello. Lindsay. Enjoy. Hi, I do have a Hi, question Liz. for Fern. Hi, Fern. Okay. Hi. I'm, I'm watching this and having seen so some of your previous work, I, I get I'm I'm very impressed with the progression. Progression sounds like I don't mean progression, but the change from one from one theme of 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 work to another theme. And while they're all connected, they're vastly different. And mm -hmm. I guess I guess. When you start a new theme, I, I would wonder what, what starts you on that road to the new theme? Is it is it discovering that object or is it a color or, and then mm. suddenly it's a whole theme. I, I'm just kind of amazed at how that develops because I've seen your themes develop, so. Yeah, that, that's a, actually, can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna mute myself. Uh, Okay, that's actually, it's a great question. And um, there's no one answer to it. Sometimes you have an idea and you work through it and you're kind of done a little. You, you work through an idea and you love doing it. But if you go, go too far, you could almost start, you don't wanna, I don't wanna ever repeat, like copy myself. So there's a point where I'm just, I, I wear out an idea a little bit and I sort of morph into something else. Um, in my mind, it is, it, it might be something like I just happened to, I just happened to see a playing card and it caught my interest and it showed, and, and you start one and then it's, as you do one, it, it's, there's a whole bunch of new possibilities that open up. And sometimes, um, uh, and, and sometimes, you know, I don't, it's, you just, I wanted to come out from under the glass. So it started a whole new way of working. So it, I, I guess it depends. The Starburst paintings is about six or seven of them. And the ones where it's kind of layers on top. And I, that just, I was, sometimes when I go to bed at night, I, I, if I can't sleep, I just start, it just popped into my head, the first one, it just, popped into my head and I was thinking about it and 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 I got up in the morning and I start doing them and I did about six of them and the seventh one I, it wasn't very good I was sort of getting tired you know so then I was like okay I need I might go back to it but I need to leave it so it's it's some of it is an instinct that as you know as we get older and live through life we are we have we can hear our instincts better than we used to, I think, and we trust them better, so, I think. So, so I guess that's 
what happens. And, and sometimes you could just be out and about and see a color or see something and it just, it moves you in some way or it makes you think about other possibilities. So, yeah. And, and sometimes I have a lot of pictures in my head and I start writing things down that I want to work on, but I can't do it all at once. So I have to, you kind of have to control yourself. So I, I actually have a list right now of <laughs> pictures in my head so I don't forget them. So right. anyway, but yeah, good question. So we have a question in the chat um, from Kathy. Do you handwrite or type paper letters? And how do you feel about that not really happening anymore? So do I personally you mean write notes to people? Is that what? I, yeah, I get I, um, Kathy, yeah, you can I, unmute yourself, actually. Yeah. Hi. Hi, friend. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just wondering if you yourself write mm -hmm letters because i know i don't anymore and my handwriting is is terrible i feel like i can hardly make chicken scratch on a notepad and mm -hmm. um i i think you know i rarely give or receive handwritten letters anymore mm -hmm. um the the whole kind of like correspondence by mail thing seems to be um not not really something people do anymore and and is there is there a loss there is there how do you feel about that so i i i don't write long letters to people but i do write notes to people i i i will tend to try to write thank you notes handwritten notes and just because no one does it anymore it is kind of nice to do it mm -hmm. um and to, we all get a lot of junk mail. So every once in a while, it's nice to, <laughs> oh my goodness, it's a, something real. So yes, I do do that, although nothing lengthy. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I, I think, you know, we all get a lot of emails and, you know, they're read, they're deleted. We save some, but I save some, but then you don't always go back to them because who knows where they are, you know, in your inbox or whatever um so i i think there's something lost yeah i do i i i think that i think it's kind of beautiful that these paper keepsakes survive and um we see windows into people's lives um that are not so different from our own and there's something kind of timeless and reassuring about that in some way um uh, so I, 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 yeah, I think, you know, I, I hate to say it's a loss because I know life moves forward and we, and we need to move forward with it. So I'm not one of those people that say we have to stay the same. We don't, we're always changing and moving. And I think that's a good thing, but, um, there's a, there's a, you know how you have to be really careful when you write an email or send a text that it doesn't sound a little more curt than you meant it to. <laughs> and, or, and so there's something lost. You, you, you feel something in these letters that are poignant, you know. I have, I have one more question if I, if sure. I could. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, the color relationships in your work because they seem just so precise and studied mm -hmm. and labored over um, mm -hmm. and, and, and the geometry. There, there's something about it that reminds me of, of quilts in a way. And I wonder if uh, that's something that you think about or if there's other um, sources that you're considering when you're coming up with your color color and geometry relationships so um going back many many years many years um i uh, we were out driving in lancaster pennsylvania and i came across um we went into amish country and i was <laughs> bought a bunch of books on amish quilting which i fell in love with so, um, and yes, I have always been um, influenced by, in particular, Amish quilting. I love textile, all textile arts. Um, I love the handwork of it. 
Um, and um, so I, yeah, my color is definitely influenced by that. Very um, perceptive of you. Um, and also um, 14th century Persian manuscripts, all kinds of Asian art, all kinds of, uh, from all, uh, many parts of Asia. Um, uh, and then of course, people like, you know, Albers and, uh, um, and contemporary artists. So I'm influenced by a lot of sources, but, uh, but quilting is definitely one of them. And certainly with, and it, it's funny about that you, I was very influenced many years ago, and then you kind of move into different areas and then you're influenced all over again, it comes back to you. Um, and so, and I am very, um, so I have certain colors in my head that I'm always searching for, and I'm searching for bold, but quiet and bold at the same time. Um, and so that's, yeah, and, um, Anyway, so yes, and then the geometry. So yeah, the work, and I think Laura hit on this a little earlier, is I'm really, I'm using these, the letters and I'm using um, the other, um, you know, old pieces of paper um, and tickets and all kinds of other stuff that I've used. And yes, they are, they become geometric designs. So they, they transform into uh, geometric patterns and shapes and, um, and, and a more contemporary way of looking at them. And um, so the, it has to be that if you took away all the narration and all the words that it would work as a painting without any of it. It is an abstract painting really. And it's just that I'm adding these words that connect in a very different way to, to, to me and hopefully that, that make it to me universal, more a different kind of universal, I guess. So I'm, 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 I'm and, and I'm, when I'm putting them together, I, I have to balance, I'm always balancing those two things. Um, and so there, anyway, does that answer your question? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Check the chat. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that, those were really great questions, Kathy. And um, just thinking about like handwritten material, I had an experience just not so long ago and it made me think of your paintings. I came upon a um, index card Mm -hmm. uh, my mother used to send me little index cards with recipes on them. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even see what it said. I just saw the handwriting. Mm -hmm. And I knew it was my mom, you know, it was my mom's handwriting. Right. right. So, you know, I was thinking about, you, you know, you have when you're working and you have no sound and you're so focused mm -hmm. and it's, it's almost like you're getting, you really are getting to know these people mm -hmm. that wrote these letters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, handwriting is so unique. I mean, the people that you know right. really well in your life, you know, mm -hmm. you don't, you just know it's them by looking at mm -hmm. their writing. But, right. You know, but like Kathy said, I mean, I like my handwriting was bad before and now it's way worse. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a really interesting thing to think about. I mean, your signature is your signature. So. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So we're getting, we're getting close to our time. So I'm gonna just put out a last call. If there are any more questions, now's the time. I think Deborah, you can un unmute yourself, Deborah. Uh, I wonder if you could talk, I'm still muted. No, I can hear you. Okay. Um, could you talk for just a minute about how long these things take? And I'm sure it varies depending mm -hmm. on the nature and the size and all of that, but mm -hmm. it seems like it would be so time consuming. Um, it is, uh, you're right. Um, it takes, I, it takes, each one takes a very long time and each, um, it's great that I work with acrylic, but even even I found that acrylic takes a bit to dry when you have a lot of layers and I mostly it, they need to dry between the layers. Um, uh, but, um, you know, some every once in a while magic happens and I can, um, 
one, you know, I, it, it just paints itself in a sense and others I labor over for months. And then just recently I had a whole bunch of, I've been doing a lot of shifting around in my studio and I took out some older paintings and I have reworked five of them you know, so, so, so they, maybe I painted them in 2019. And now I've just uh, not repainted the whole thing. But when I took them out, I saw, oh, I, that could be better. And this could be better. And I'm uh, redoing all these older paintings. So, um, so then you could say that painting took three, you know, three years. So, so it's each one is different, but they are yeah, they took up the, you, you, I need a lot of patience. Yes. To, to do this. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think that's Leslie. Leslie, you can unmute yourself. I thought I did. No, I oh. did. Can oh, you? Yes. You can, we can yeah, hear you. I, yep. Okay. Hi, Fern. Hi, yes. Leslie. It's so great to hear you and to see your work really is very inspiring and uplifting. Is it, do you use a pen or a brush to do your fine? The it's the there, uh, pens. They're all, all different kinds of archival pens. Yeah, yeah. And, so you're and not dipping, dipping into, into um, paint. You're using a pen that's already Yeah, so I'm using, um, yeah. So I'm using, yeah. you know, pens. I have bought, those but I haven't used them because and you can get them in good pens and in so many different widths so that's something I think about is it zero zero five or zero five or zero one or it's, yeah. it seems to make a big difference um, um, sure. and, different, and different colors what color am I going to use um, there's quite a bit of choices these days which is kind of nice yeah so yeah. Well, wonderful work. It's great to see. I'm happy to see you going into the, to paint now and not just collage. It's nice. Yeah, nice yeah. It's, been, it's been kind of fabulous these last years. A lot of fun and different. Well, different kind of fun. That was fun in a different way. Yeah. 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 Very nice. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. All right, everybody. Fern, this was so great. Thank you so much. Is thank last you, call? Do I see any hands going up? Do I see hands? <laughs> oh, I see applause. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone, for uh, joining. I very nice of you to take the time to do so. Well, we really appreciate your taking the time to talk to us. And um, like I said, it's, the show's open till April uh, 16th, and um, there's more information. Um, on our website, lakegeorgearts.org, on the homepage, there's a direct link to the page we have for, for Fern, and there's some links there. Um, there's a radio interview that Fern did. Um, I can't, who was that, that radio interview with? Oh, it was by uh, George Spencer. Yeah, that um, was good. I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And the uh, House for Arts is there as well. And then, um, and anyway, hope to see you in the gallery. I see a couple of messages. Um, congratulations, Fern. Um, okay, yeah, so this is fantastic. Um, I'm going to end this meeting now, and we'll see you all at the gallery. Um, thanks, Fern. Thank Am I missing you. anything? I don't think so. Beautiful work, Fern. Thank you, Fern. Thank thanks, you. Fern. Thanks, yeah. Fern. Okay, take care, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thank, you. Thank Bye -bye. you, Laura. Bye. Bye.